The Last Testament by Jonas Ben Dixon. The truth shall set you free. It measures, oh, that's the outside cover. It's a little bit bigger, so six and a half by nine and a half inches. 464 pages, 142 color photographs, 32 black and white images and illustrations. It's a hardcover, flexi bend. It's packed, absolutely packed full of stuff. It reminds me of the Gideon's Bible. It was published in September 2017. And going by the subject matter, that's exactly what I think it's meant to be. I like some of Jonas's earlier work, which he did in Russia. The satellites was a really beautiful piece of work. But I've wanted this book for a while and I eventually got the time and just ordered it. And for the price and for what it contains, it's a really bargain. I would suggest you get out and buy this. You can buy this on the Aperture site. You can get it on all the other usual retailers as well. I looked on Jonas's site and you, you're unable to buy it from there, but you can definitely get it from the Aperture site. And the price, I think it's amazing for, for what's in this. What's it about? Well, you can tell it looks a bit like a Bible. It is... A sequel, really, in terms of some of the words you used, I've seen written down for it. It's like a sequel to the Old and New Testament of the Bible. What it is, it's about seven men around the world who claim they are the second coming of Jesus Christ. So you've got, let me just run this to the chapters here. So there's the chapters. You've got the Last Testament, the Lord of Lords, Jesus of Kitwe, the King of Jews, Henry... Christon, the book of David, David, Shaler, Dolores, Cain, Simon, on the minivan, Jesus, Matoyoshi, the appointed son of God, the book of Moses, Moses of Longuane, the church of the last testament, Visarian of Siberia, or Visarian of, of Siberia. So it's about these people who claim to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. So you've got seven picture stories. In fact, you've got six picture stories because one of these guys, I presume, judging by the content of the story imagery and the way he shot it, he didn't have any access because it's shot, I think, from TV, CCTV, one of them, or both of them, or all different forms of visual media. He's just sort of shot it. And I think when you have a look through, going by how stunning some of the imagery is, I don't feel it... That's probably the only weak spot for the book. Other than that, it's superb. I felt like it was just shot from a distance while these sort of take on a real close observation. A quirky at times as well. He sort of had a free hand in depicting these guys the way he wanted to. So I think when you look at the ones which is on CTV, it's quite abstract, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it needed it to just round it off and the sort of... He sort of maybe he needed the seven to really tell a story and that's that sort of other person was really important in the context now i haven't read it because it's you can see i'm flicking through it. it's m massive i mean it's really nicely put together and it's obviously everything about it's about this sort of it's a sort of style of the bible extracts from the new testament and just the 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 graphic design and everything it's just it's like a sort of almost new testament bible you see in in church and what you get on a sunday when you go in and have a look you know just the little um service book and things like that it's it's really nicely put together this is an intro i think yes it must be by jonas because it starts off if someone had suggested just a few years ago that it would fall to me to chronicle the jesus's return to earth i would have balked I've always been a man of little faith. But saying that, I've, I've read an interview with him where he says he's intrigued by faith, and obviously this is that outlet for him. So let's have a look. And that's his work there. So even the pages, I don't know what GSM that is, but they're sort of so thin. They're like, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 GSM thick, and they're just, the, they're like the Bible. It's, it's fascinating. So I guess, having not really dug in deep to the journalism bit yet, and the the text, I guess the Lord of the Lords, Jesus of Kitwe, is the introduction, the black and white pictures. I presume that may be his picture, and it's obviously converted into a sort of testimony. And Kitwe is in Zambia. And what all the text is about, it's like a, a sort of history 
the theology, extracts from the Bible, scriptures, testaments. It's a sort of really excellent piece of journalism. It's sort of like really in depth and, and sort of designed in a great way to illustrate with words why and just well, the justification of why this is the next Messiah. So make of it what you will. Like I said, some of the photography is stunning and we'll pick up on a couple of bits there. And this is the Jesus of Kitwe. Very iconic, really nicely done. Lovely shallow depth of field. So if many of you listened to my waffle on these broadcasts, you will know I'm not a massive fan of this gut airing on a double page with this format vertical book. I still have problems with it. Sometimes I don't feel it works because in, in fact the picture is so strong it, it, it sort of it works for me but I still feel it's it's just too much play within the, the nature of the shot and it's really conflicting but I'm going to get over that really quickly and just go through some of the context of the pictures how it's shot, what he's looking at. It's, again, you know, when I was looking at Robin Hammond's book, it's in Africa and in the book, he's in Zimbabwe, it's got that old transparency feel. And it's just almost theatre. And I'm just thinking, yeah, there's definitely, there's got it. I think it just feels, it's very chunky in terms of the black. And I'm just wondering, if he's using flash there, or is it just that African contrasty light? But going through the rest of the book, it does feel that there is a bit of flash in parts and he's using it, which is fair enough, it's absolutely fine. And the detail in, in the low light, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. And it's got this sort of almost pearly type sheen to the quality of it. It's like, is it lustre, I think? It's a sort of matty, silky, sheen to it. I don't know what paper it's printed on. So he's looking at the group, he's looking at the people. And one thing which strikes me after looking at all the pictures is that there's definitely a feeling of isolation in this. So we've got these self-proclaimed messiahs and their disciples, their worshippers, their followers, whatever you want to call them, in their cult, if that's what you want to call it. But in that, there feels a sort of, just feels like he's done it in a way which sort of visually makes them isolated. It, it's, it's like them and us. It's, it's really contextually interesting. I, I, I do like it. And I find the, the pictures are quite passive as well. They're quite still in the presence. You know, everything's, there's a sort of static element to the pictures. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm just seeing a sort of, it almost sort of feels set up a lot of it, but I know it's not. And I know it's just got a, a sort of a weird quality of stages of pictures. And he's obviously spent enough time with each person to get the trust. And he's, it's just such a great depiction, you know? And I, I love this stuff. Again, going back to the way the John Anderson book and the way he was doing stuff and the archival stuff, it's a new approach to photography now. I think people want a more three-dimensional book as a source of three-dimensional information. They want more than just the pictures. They want context. They want insight. They want to be, they want to be educated. And I think it's, it's more now than just looking at pictures. And the thing about books now is I think this whole format of giving you more artefacts and more collects and more information about the picture. So it's not just a series of imagery. It's something like what digital is doing. It's giving you that time-based media and it's giving you further insight and further dimension into the people that you're looking at because it's time-based, it's moving. There's, you, can, you can get more of a feel of, of the narrative with it. And I think adding this extra element of collects and artefacts and 
possessions and real things, real things, not just some journalist words on a paper. I think it's it's just, it becomes such a different story and a different journey when you're looking at photographer's work. And it's definitely something, if you're looking at this and you're developing ideas for projects, start adding dimension to it. You know, you can take great pictures. We look at colour, we look at shape. Anybody can take a picture, but you've got to see, and, and, and it's opening your eyes, and, 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 and Jonas does this really well. You know, he's... He's very clever. He understands shape, he understands pattern. I bring this down a bit. So, I, I just find the whole thing really intriguing. You know, we've looked at, I don't know what page we're on now. We're on a lot. Oh no, well that's page 61. So on page 61, and that's just the first, that's just the first Messiah. So this is the King of Jews. Inri Crystal, you will apologise for my pronunciations. Again, we've got this. Oh, this this picture is what's coming up. Because, like, if you remember with the first one, he's introducing it. And it's almost like historical reference, isn't it? It's almost like giving it credible history, this this text. And just with the way it's done in black and white. And where, where he's got these from, I'm not really sure. I mean, this may be their publicity, it may be from other people. I have no idea. This will take some time to get my head round and read. I wonder if Jonas has read all of this. I'm sure he has. Look at this. So what we're going to come to Inri, and I think this picture, I think he was summing up an image to define the person as, as that image we all have of Jesus, whether you've read a Bible or whether you've seen a picture on a, on a cathedral wall or a church window or a stone carving or a painting there's that that sort of image everybody uses of jesus and i think he was looking for an image to lead into everything that sort of pr image that that's their image and this is not my favorite one this is great look at that let's just jump this up a little bit it's beautiful isn't it just such a great play on plays it's 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 fantastic and Again, isolation. He's isolating. They feel isolated. Sort of Parish, Martin Parish theme. It is quite, it does feel like it's a bit of theatre. It does feel like it's a, a sort of Martin Parr story, doesn't it? it? It's weird. And I'm not, that's no slant on Jonas at all. It's a sort of, it's a, it's a compliment. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Such a great picture, so beautifully exposed, just perfect. He knew what he was doing when he was doing this. You know, he he he's got a narrative, and he he has to spend enough time in a place. It must have been interesting to spend enough time there to get these pictures. Look at that, that is amazing. Oh, I want to come down on that a little bit. Let me just drop that down. Let's see if I can focus. That's amazing. You've got to get out and buy this. It's just fantastic. Just for the whole story, you know, behind it, it's just beautiful. And he hasn't... He hasn't ridiculed anybody. He's taken it on face value, and I think that's the most honest way to do it. And I love the fact that he's adding port weights. He's sort of focused on every aspect of it, hasn't he? He's got the portraiture, he's got the whole day-to-day -day activities. So good. All really well exposed, all fantastic. Look at that. That's monumental, isn't it? So beautiful. Really nice photography. Preaching, again, isolated. That's so good. It's knowing what to do and knowing what you want to say and knowing how to choreograph the people and, and and just interpreting what they're about and watching them and trying to sort of get a feel of what you're going to say with them and what you're trying to do with them. And you're telling a bigger story, so you've got to make each story fit into the other stories. So you've got to have some strong narrative. It's pointless going to somewhere like this and just getting one or two. He's obviously gone in and said, look, you just got to let me do this. And he's got to have trust. And they welcome the PR, I guess. 
the book of David, David Shaler, Dolores Kane. So um, on, on surface value, I'm not really sure where a lot of these people are. And it obviously will make some sense in certain areas, like there's a Japanese one. And that's interesting. I think this is England. Let's have a look. These pages are just amazing. It's just so in-depth. And, and let's have a look. Don't follow me or yourself. Don't follow me or you'll end up at my house. Ye are gods, if only ye knew it. Yeah, so this is the theology. This is the, the their, their testament, I guess. So there we go. Middlesbrough born. The North East, a former MI5 agent. He blew the whistle in 1996 to uncover alleged corruption in the competence and intelligence service. He's been fighting the Goliaths of earthly judiciary and establishment ever since. His revelation that he is Jesus came in 2007. From then on, he's been a mission to teach humanity Christ's conscious, unconditional love and supremacy of God's law over man's legislation. Wow. Would you question that there's a mental health issue with these people? What would you, what would that picture say about somebody claiming to be the new Messiah? It's interesting, isn't it, how different cultures would take this on. Being English, I would think he's a bit nuts. But in other places, I think there's always that aspect that somebody thinks they're nuts. But I think, ah, right, it makes sense watching an eclipse. That's it, that makes sense. It's, it's quite interesting, isn't it? This guy, from what I've gone through the pictures previously, when I looked at it online and when I got the book, this guy's really interesting because it's, 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 a sort of, it's not a straightforward journey visually with this guy. He's got many different masks. And he's chosen his days, hasn't he? He's using that sun as a sort of, obviously a natural element, but he's given it some depth and, and mystique with some of these sun pictures, Caravan Park. Uh, you know how difficult it is to shoot in this lighting condition. It's just, it's not easy. And there doesn't seem to be much grain. I'd love to know what he shot this on. I think this one is, I think he is taking this for face value, but I feel, is it, a little bit looking at this guy who's a bit odd or eccentric. It's not every day somebody says they're Jesus Christ or the reincarnation. It's interesting when you see it in your own country, isn't it? It's like, is he a bit potty? That's so good. And I think in this particular storyline, it is sort of reflecting this guy is a real sort of eccentric, a little bit wayward because we change his face a little bit in a minute, and that's great. Now he's a girl. Now he's obviously, I don't know if it's a transvestite or, I don't know what it is, transsexual, I don't know what the word is now, I'm too scared to say. There's obviously another side of him. Again, the isolation. These people feel really isolated. So good. This ma Jonas makes this look easy, but I guarantee it's not. He's made it look easy. He's, it's, he's almost like set the stage and he knows what each scene is and he's trying to grasp each scene and trying to get him into situations where he's going to photograph each scene, build the narrative, tell the story in a certain way. Look at that. Look at the change. You're witness unto me. So good. The sermon... On the minivan. Now, I think this is this is Jesus Matayoshi, and I, I presume this is in Japan. That's yeah. Matayoshi was born in Okinawa, Japan, forty-four. In 1977, he founded the World Economic Community Party, which bases its policies on Matayoshi's identify identity as Jesus Christ reborn. Maya Toshi, also known as the only God, will bring about the end times and God kingdom to the democratic political process. No idea what that means. So here we go. Oh, I love this bit. This is great. Hang about. I love that. That's great because he puts it the other side. Great portraiture. Great vision. 
I'd love to know what was behind that idea and why it was so significant that he photographed them for behind. Maybe it's hidden in the text somewhere. Again, look at the isolation. What's that saying throughout this? Is it is it is is there a sort of underlying current that actually you're in your own world, nobody else believes you? That's great. But then again, that could have been set up at a certain time, couldn't it? It could have been done at a time where he did it for the, you know, he just went out for the sake of it to get him the pictures. And it couldn't, I could be wrong. This could be something he does every day. He shot a lot of verticals. And I wonder, again, if the verticals were on purpose because of the style of the book. Is it forcing the photographer to shoot verticals? Is verticals a natural process? I don't know. Some photographers love shooting verticals, like Ian Berry tells me he shoots verticals all the time. It's just natural. I know another photographer who I questioned his work, and I was looking at his work, a young guy, and that's all he was shooting, verticals. I'm like, do you never go horizontal? And he said, I just naturally go to vertical. So it's their own, but I wonder if there's been vertical foresight within this context when he was shooting it because of the nature of the book and he didn't want to obviously have it all either small like that or full bleeds. I don't know, I don't know. We can only read into other elements while we're looking and in hindsight. Nevertheless, that was a very interesting depiction, a very quiet depiction, a very brief encounter maybe of this guy. He hasn't gone as sort of in depth and maybe he just couldn't get the access with this guy as he's had times with with other people now this this is the appointed son of god and there's a lot of looks like a sort of propaganda doesn't it propaganda material so kibuli is the founder and the leader of the philippines based organization the kingdom of jesus christ everybody celebrates wealth and his followers pay a tithe i think that's what it's called t-i-t-h-e of their earnings to his church. He obviously, he currently owns private luxury intercontinental airplane, a fleet of helicopters, TV stations, university, large expansions of land. While my own attempts at gaining access, Kriboli and his community have proved futile the broadcast sermons and news reports from his own TV channel, Sunshine Media Network, international show glimpses of the Messiah at work. And he's put sort of email correspondence and say, I think of him trying to to get in. Maybe he should have left him out. Maybe he wants to highlight what he's about. Maybe he did it just to say, well, I can still do something. It looks like a real dodgy character, this geezer. But I don't really know much about him. Would this have been good in? Yeah, maybe. I'm not really sure. Did it need a time in it? Now, you can see he's gone smaller on the, on the horizontals here because the quality won't take the big page and I still like that and you can see there's a sort of real diminishing of the, the pixels there when it's gone big and but I like it it's, it's all right it tells part of the story whether it's relevant in here or whether you should just left them out I'll leave it for you to decide have a look I think it's all right I think it's good so Moses Moses along one end is known for his 40 or so disciples in South Africa as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, or simply Jesus. In 92, when Moses was working as a small time jewelry salesman, God came to him in a dream with the word that he is the Messiah. Okay. So again, we've got his theologies. And then we've got I got there's a sort of dialogue. I'm trying to work out these dialogues. This is a sort of interview, dialogue, information, email, correspondence. It's a great, that's the shot which depicts that vision of the second Jesus coming in. That's again, look at the isolation. I just drop that down. Interesting choice with a blank page there. What's on the other side? Interesting. Great shot, look at that. That's some nice stuff. I love the, the irons that are sitting there. 
It's very National Geographic, isn't it? It's quite... It's got that end, end feel to it. It's beautiful. Nice piece of work. I keep saying it. I definitely think it needs this, these sort of things in the, in, in the book, as I was saying earlier. I do like it. This shot's just fantastic. Look at that. It's always really interesting with windows about looking out from in. People tend to look out to in, but looking in to out can really just add some dimension. And I like the fact that you can stay further away to tell the story using the mid-ground and, and as a framing aspect, but just using parts of the place where you're going to photograph which other people might not think of using to tell the story. And I, and I just like that context of, you know, moving inside and looking out and seeing how you can frame and what you can capture. I, I just find the whole concept really interesting. I'm always looking out for that. Because, tend to, you know, it, it's either one, quite a normality to just sort of shoot like that or shoot inside but or, or, or look in. And I just like the concept of looking in to out. Such a good shot. Look at that. What a great shot. Again, great lighting technique. Don't know where the main light source is coming from. I don't know whether there's any flash. There's obviously a strong light coming from there, but beautifully exposed. This is a shot I would love to have taken. Simple, but so effective. With that broken glass there in the eye, it's just fantastic. Detailed shots again. Look at them shoes. And this, you know, Simple shot, but really made dimensional by the use of light and how he's captured the balance of light with the black skin, which is quite absorbent with light as well, but got a really nice balance with outside. And just, he's given a depth and shape and, and it's, it's fantastic. It's interesting, you know, it, he, he doesn't struggle with composition or light. He, he really masters it in a way and, and, and that's fantastic. You can see he's a well-practiced individual with with the lenses he uses, but also just his understanding of how to compose and use light and how to manipulate light as well. I think this is this the king, the Messiah's wedding, isn't it? That looks a bit dodgy, but I'm sure it's all in good taste. That's a great shot. Isn't it, look, isn't it interesting how he looks more like a sort of West Coast rapper? It's that culture thing, isn't it? It's interesting. The Church of the Last Testament, Visionary Siberia. For me, out of all the seven, this is, this is the one which doesn't look so isolated. This is the one that if you were going to do a depiction of the Messiah, and we think of the past imagery we're used to seeing through the Bible of the Last Supper and all of their iconic imagery and paintings and all of that. This section has that. It's, he's totally nailed this. It's beautiful. It's my favourite part of it. I don't know where he shot this in the scheme of the seven. Maybe the guy, the Philippines guy, who's got that cult and, and this church and the TV stations, maybe he is not isolated in his way because I'm sure he's got a lot of people around him and he's got a lot of followers but Jonas has shot it in a way to isolate him a little bit as well so but for me this Russian one is just fantastic and it looks really in depth I mean look at this at different chapters his scriptures his theologies it's just monumental in 1988 a man born as Sergei Todorov lost his job as a traffic cop in the Siberian town of Munisinsk. He had his first revelation that he was Jesus Christ, just as the USSR collapsed around him. In the early 90s, he founded the Church of the Last Testament, renamed himself Vizarion, and settled with his disciples in the off-grid utopian eco-village in, in the Siberian woods, the abode of dawn. And he's got 5,000 followers, schools, churches. It's interesting how... That happens, isn't it? How that evolves. It's really interesting. This for me is just one of the images I'm talking about. It's like one of them leaflets you got through the door 
which says come to church believe in jesus and you will seek redemption or whatever it is or come and rejoice with the love of our lord and i've had these mail outs come through my letterbox and stuff and that's just that's like that's just like a stunning pr shot for jesus christ it's fantastic it's just fantastic and look at this next shot. I'm going to take my time on this because it's the Last Supper, isn't it? How good is that? It's just fantastic. So this is going back to them iconic paintings and drawings and imagery we've been used to looking at over our youth and our adulthood of what Jesus Christ and religion and the Bible is all about. Look at that. This is this this story here, number seven, just totally nails it for me. It's just, it's stunning. It really is a beautiful piece of work. Had he just done a book on the seven, number seven here, and given me all that work, and shown me more of this, I would have bought it straight away. There's like more than one book in here, but this is just. Look at that outside shot. It's just. He's done well here, but his clarity, his use of lens, it almost feels like he shot it on a 5.4, but I doubt it. I really doubt it, but I have no idea. I'd love him to maybe give me some insight in anybody else who watches this. That's fantastic, look at that. What he shot it on. Looks like Morsh, the Russian soup, I may be wrong. It's very clever, it's lovely. I love that. He's gone and he's covered throughout everybody. Good portraiture, good establishing shots, good detail shots. There's context and reference. There's religious symbols and motifs and everything all the way through it. The design's perfect. It's, it's a fantastic buy. You should get this. Oh, it's just such a good shot. That, if you can't see it, is... I, I thought they were fishing or something, but they're collecting water or something at night. And these two lights, these two beams are the, the headlights on the on the heads, that the, the torches. And the, the cross as well with a telegraph pole. It's just, look at that. I, I love this Russian story. This is what I first saw, I think, somewhere. It was in one of the magazines and I spotted it years ago. A couple of years ago. It's fantastic. And that, oh, it's just, and look at that. It's just so good. So, like I said, I would have bought this just for the Russian side of it if that was it. Brilliant. Look at that. I was just going to show you them all. I've missed a few images out. I hope I've given you some insight into this work. Look at that. I'm going to come down on this. Sorry, I was just about to end it and I forgot about this picture. That's amazing, isn't it? Brilliant piece of work, Jonas. I think I'd be very proud of this. It must have took some work to put together. Go and check his work out. I'll put his link down below. For the money you're going to pay for this book, I would just get out and buy it tomorrow. It's just such good value for money. This will keep you entertained for ages. Support his work. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share the channel. I'm just giving lots of people insight into some of the books. You're listening to my waffle and I hope it's doing something. I hope it's actually inspiring you to buy books. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Jonas. Great book. And I will look out and sort out buying some of your other books. If you want to send us a couple, I'd love to review them. Thank you. Please subscribe. Thank you to you for watching. Please share. Please subscribe. Thank you.